Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, before we get into the main video, I do want to update you on another Jane Doe case that has had a recent major development thanks to um, My Pet Albatross Productions, I believe it was, who commented on last week's video and brought this all to my attention. Now, we haven't discussed Lavender Doe on this channel before, but she has been on my list of potential cases to cover for just over a year, I believe. So I will give you a brief rundown. She was found in Kilgore, Texas in October of 2006, lying face down on a burning wood pile. By the time she was discovered, 98% of her body had been burned, and evidence indicated that she had been sexually assaulted. Believing to be between 17 to 25 years old, she became known as Lavender Doe for the color of her sweater. Police made some progress in the decade after her discovery, but there was nothing major until August 27th, 2018, which was last year, when a man named Joseph Wayne Burnett confessed to killing her. Burnett, who had been a person of interest in the case since 2007, is also a suspect in the 2018 murder of a Longview woman named Felicia Pearson. Burnett said Lavender Doe's name could have been Ashley, and since then that's kind of where we were with the update, but um, since then, the DNA Doe Project has been working hard to try and identify Jane Doe, and as of January 2019, they have done just that. At first, Doe's name wasn't released due to the upcoming case against Burnett, but actually, as of the morning that I was blocking this episode, the Gregg County Sheriff's Office has revealed her identity as 21-year-old Dana Lynn Dodd, whose last known location was Jacksonville, Florida. I'm sure more details will be available in the future, but for now, we have a name to put to the face thanks to law enforcement and the DNA Doe Project. I hope the families of both Dana Dodd and Felicia Pearson see Burnett face justice in the future court proceedings. Cases like Dana's give us a sense of optimism that more nameless individuals will be able to reclaim their true identity. And I hope that is the case for today's nameless victim known as the Rainbow Falls Doe, who, unlike Dana Dodd, still remains nameless. For today's case, we have to go back to Tuesday, June 15th, 1993 in Douglas County, Colorado. Not far from Castle Rock, within the Pike San Isabel National Forest, just between Woodland Park and Deckers, lies the Rainbow Falls campground. It was here that hikers stumbled upon a horrific discovery. At a makeshift campsite was the decaying body of a female, clothed only from the waist up in a Harley Davidson shirt, sporting injuries to her head. There was no sign of evidence or identification found nearby, and she'd been left out in the elements, making her unrecognizable. Despite Rainbow Falls Doe's advanced state of decomposition, the medical examiner still found enough about her to give police a starting point. Her age range has been listed anywhere from 13 to 25 years of age, and future tests would narrow the range further between 13 and 20 years. A white female, Doe had a stockier build with larger breasts and hips, standing between 5 foot 3 inches to 5 feet 8 inches tall, and weighing somewhere between 130 and 160 pounds. She fit a size 6 to 7 shoe, and her eye color is listed as unknown, but her shoulder length hair has had several descriptions over the years. First, it was light brown to blonde, possibly dyed. However, a web sleuth user who spoke with Wes Riber of the Douglas County Medical Examiner's Office claimed that Doe's hair was more of a reddish light brown with blonde highlights. 
Several more details to note. Um, traces of illegal drugs came back negative. Doe's earlobes were both pierced and her fingernails were very short. Whether she kept them that way, they were cut that way, or she chewed them is unknown. Along Doe's abdomen was a, quote, well-heeled horizontal surgical scar, the result of a splenectomy, meaning her spleen was surgically removed at some point in her life. I will touch more on the splenectomy in the theory section, but for now, we'll look at Doe's dentals. Her teeth were reportedly in excellent condition, there were no fillings, and two of her four wisdom teeth were previously removed, while the others were impacted, meaning they hadn't fully breached her gums. At the time, partial DNA was extracted, but authorities thought dentals might be their best option to identify Doe. Despite the fact that she was not clothed from the waist down, the coroner found no evidence of a sexual assault, but police couldn't rule out the chance that there was some kind of non-intercourse sexual assault either. Her Harley Davidson t-shirt was black and featured a bright colored design of a motorbike with lightning accents, which several web sleuth users actually traced back to the designer, Funware Incorporated. The company was based out of Florida, and according to user Bride of Chaotica 2, she said, quote, From my research, it appears that they were not a national or international company until several years after they opened in 1990. That same user tried to reach out to the company via Facebook Messenger, but never received a response. On Doe's left hand was a gold open circle pinky ring. Her left ear was studded with a clear glass stone earring, and she has two gold necklaces shown here. On the right is a single-pointed hexagonal black stone. On the left, the pendant resembles a pair of hands grasping a spherical brown tiger's eye stone. Authorities believe that she died anywhere from two to three days before the hikers discovered her body. And while no official cause of death could be determined, Several sources report that police believe a blow to the head might be to blame, but because they can't be certain, Deputy Douglas County Coroner Chuck Brining says Doe's death could have been the result of natural causes, an accident, or homicide. But in order to start progressing towards the truth, authorities first needed a name. Officers on the scene that day likely never imagined that over 25 years later, they would still be trying to identify Doe. Running her prints through APHIS, short for Automated Fingerprint Identification System, for Colorado in 1999 yielded no results. So Douglas County Sheriff's Office crime scene investigator Andy Smith penned letters to every other state's APHIS systems, with the exception of Hawaii and Alaska. Again, they had no matches. In the days after Doe's discovery, no one came forward to claim her, and days turned to months, years, decades, and now, here we are. The only other clue that authorities had to go off of was an event that occurred over the preceding weekend. From Saturday, June 12th through Sunday the 13th, the Vietnam Vets Motorcycle Club held a convention at Horse Creek Campground, which is just south of Decker's. Doe's body was found about 11.8 miles south of Decker's, and authorities thought that her close proximity with the event and the Harley-Davidson shirt she was found wearing might be their key to identifying her. Unfortunately, the convention had no official roster. Attendees came and went as they pleased, and authorities have been able to speak to some who were at the convention, but obviously tracking down every single individual is impossible. As of the airing of this video, no concrete connection between Doe and the convention or the club has been established. According to Douglas County Under Sheriff Holly Nicholson Cluth, since the trail went cold, Doe's case has been reopened several times in 1998, 2000, 2004, 2008, and most recently on October 12th, 2012, when her body was exhumed from Cedar Hill Cemetery in Castle Rock. 
According to the Cedar Hill Cemetery superintendent, the exhumation was intense and rigorous, but there was some positive news upon unearthing Doe's vault and coffin. A water leak into the vault actually preserved her remains fairly well, enough to take another set of fingerprints. And while there was, yet again, no match on that front, Doe's bone marrow was sent to the University of North Texas for DNA extraction and comparisons to their database, to no avail, it seems. However, detectives had one last hope of at least narrowing down where Doe was from using isotope testing. The Smithsonian performed this analysis using Doe's femur bone, and the results might tell us why little progress has been made. Doe's geographic locality traces back to, at the highest probability, Alaska or certain portions of southern Canada, including British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Newfoundland, Labrador, and, at the lower probability, eastern Quebec. A year after her exhumation, Doe's skull was sent to a forensic artist in the Miami-Dade Police Department named Samantha Steinberg, whose track record of reconstructions has been fairly accurate over her career. Using several key points, Steinberg created her own composite of Doe, one that looks very different from the original clay reconstructions. In the five years following, progress on Doe's case has been relatively silent, but that hasn't stopped the online community from forming their own theories concerning Rainbow Falls Doe. The first thing I want to touch on is Doe's splenectomy, or the surgical removal of her spleen. The spleen, which functions as a blood filter and aids in detecting and combating specific bacteria in the body, could have been removed for a number of different reasons. Here is a more extensive list from Wikipedia, which includes the spleen enlarging from mononucleosis, more commonly known as mono, diagnosing particular cancers, abscesses, and wandering spleen, along with physical trauma such as sports injury, etc. The exact reason Doe had her spleen removed is unclear, but sleuthers thought that it might be possible to identify Doe using hospital records of splenectomies performed on females of her age range. However, authorities, at least in the United States, are required to obtain a warrant for said records from a judge before being granted access. I think even using the splenectomy, Doe's age, and the isotope results to narrow down the scope there would still be too many medical records to obtain warrants for all of them. Which brings us to the reports that Doe was a possible runaway out of Louisiana. I believe this was theorized about before the isotope results were ever conducted, and I'm still unclear on the exact details of this particular threat of investigation, but I will try to lay it out in a simple and concise manner. A user by the name of Medea Beckbeck on the WebSleuths forum spoke with Wes Riper of the Douglas County Medical Examiner's Office, which I mentioned earlier. In the same conversation, reportedly, Riper said that this theory arose after a police officer reprimanded some young individuals in the area earlier in the week. These individuals were reportedly from Louisiana, and the officer took their pictures, but not their names. One picture of one of the females of the group was superimposed over Doe's skull to create this image, to a seeming match of the eyes, nose, and cheekbones. So everything I just told you is Riber's reported account to the WebSleuth user who posted about it back in 2009. However, another user going by Lindsay D reportedly spoke to the medical legal death investigator on Doe's case, Jamie Pemberton. This poster relayed the information from that conversation with Pemberton. It's unclear if Lindsay D is paraphrasing or directly quoting, but I am going to summarize the information for you. Pemberton says that the reports of the police officer encountering the teenagers is incorrect, or at least not fully correct. According to this account, a female teenager was arrested in an unspecified city approximately two to three hours north of Castle Rock in 1992. That girl had reportedly run away from Louisiana. Police had her picture from the arrest, but she gave a false name and later ran away from the halfway house she had been staying in. 
Authorities thought, based on the picture, that she resembled their Jane Doe and released the information that Doe was possibly a runaway from Louisiana. However, Pemberton says the arrested teenager is likely not Jane Doe, hence the reason her picture was never previously published alongside Doe's story. My research outside of the Web Sleuth forums brought me this information. Two males and one female were arrested on January 29, 1992, the day that these photos were taken. This places the arrest about a year and a half prior to Jane Doe's body being discovered. The female was a minor, so her fingerprints weren't taken, and the name that she and the two men with her gave authorities, Amanda Marie Morrison, Christopher Lee Davis, and James Richard Davis, along with their birthdays, appeared to be false. To me, this version more closely resembles Pemberton's account of the arrest. There's no way for me to know definitively and conclude this, but in my personal opinion, I think the arrest of these teens and Pemberton's account of the teenage female arrested in 1992 are the same. That the girl posing as Amanda Marie Morrison was possibly a runaway from Louisiana and if we're going with Pemberton's account, it means authorities seemingly have ruled her out or don't believe that she is likely their Jane Doe. Which leads us to Namus' rule-outs, of which there were 83 by my count. I honestly couldn't believe that number when I first saw it, but I do always want to include everyone that Doe is not so that we can look at other possible identities later on in this section. So this list is going to be incredibly extensive, and I know last week that a lot of you said this was one of the saddest parts of the video, but I think it's important to go through them all. Um, for time's sake, I am only going to show their pictures and say their name and the state that they went missing from. Um, I'm also probably going to mispronounce a lot of things, so I apologize ahead of time. The only other info I will give on the cases is if they have had major developments. So here are all of the girls that Jane Doe is not. From Ontario, Canada, Amber Potts Jaffrey, British Columbia, Canada, Delphine and Nicole. From Australia, Samantha Knight, whose killer has since been identified and convicted. In the United States, starting with Alaska, Amy Fandel and Sherry White. From Alabama, Brenda Green. There are 10 rule-outs from California, including Beth Rogers, Christine Easton, Deborah Pasholka, Elsa Wind, Kimberly Collar, Michaela Garrett, Ramona Beale, Rochelle White, Susan Bender, and Tina Layton. From Colorado, where Doe was found, we have Sherry Bynum. Out of Connecticut, Deborah Spickler. The 11 rule-outs from Florida are Andrea Durham, Bonnie Degas, Darlene Webb, Deborah Lowe, Jennifer Perry, Leah Van Skoik, Lurleen Bergeron, Mary Sprague, Tiffany Sessions, Lucinda Hewels, and Wendy Huggy. From Georgia, Katrina Jackson and Sabrina Long, and from Illinois, Robin Abrams and Donna Mezzo. Kansas has Carol Sullins, and Louisiana, Wilda May Benoit and Deidre Backen. Massachusetts, Maryland, Maine, Mississippi, and Minnesota each have one rule out, respectively. Judith Chartier, Shannon Potter, Kimberly Moreau, Nerissa Franklin, and Amy Panyak. Michigan and Missouri have two rule outs each. Kelly Brownlee, Kim Laro, and Tammy Rothganger and Tammy Wilkinson. North Carolina, Donna Barnhill, Nebraska, Margaret Holst, and New Mexico, Jennifer Pentia. New York has four rule-outs, Cindy Rolls, Judith O'Donnell, Lana Merritt, and Nancy Scamura. Nancy's body was actually found two weeks following her disappearance, but wasn't ID'd until 2012. Her murder is currently being investigated. Out of Ohio, Lisa Sexton, Sharon Pretorius, Oklahoma has Monique Daniels and Pamela Tinsley, Oregon has Rita Jolly, while Pennsylvania has Tracy Crow and Laura Thompson. South Carolina, Christina Porco and South Dakota, Pamela Jackson and Cheryl Miller. Pamela and Cheryl were best friends and vanished the same day. 
In 2013, their car was found upside down, submerged in a local creek, and their bodies were inside it. Their deaths are currently under investigation. Tennessee had Martha Green, and there are 12 rule-outs from Texas. Joyce Brewer, Kelly Wilson, Kimberly Norwood, Kristen Smith, Christy Booth, Michelle Thomas, Stacy Madison, Stephanie Bueller, Susan Smalley, Tara Breckenridge, Teresa Fishbach, and Amanda Slaughter. It was later found that Amanda Slaughter was murdered in 1993 by her husband under a false name. She was officially identified in 2012. And rounding out the list, we have Cassandra Haley from Virginia, Misty Copsey, Cherry Greenman, Darcy Ward, and Michelle Champagne from Washington, Evelyn Hartley and Katherine Schoberg from Wisconsin, and finally, Tammy Daniel from West Virginia. Web Sleuth users will usually suggest possible identities for Jane and John Doe's, and I won't be presenting all that was suggested here, but I will present the most compelling, in my opinion, of those suggestions. I believe that all of these suggestions were made by users before we knew the results of Doe's isotope tests, and I couldn't find any missing persons on the Doe Network or Charlie Project for Alaska or the aforementioned Canadian provinces that seemed like a solid possible match. So all suggestions are from the United States. I want to emphasize that these are possible identities, but it may be one or none of these girls, and we have no way of knowing as of yet. Here are the three girls. First is Laura Ann Hook, who disappeared from Wadesboro, North Carolina at age 18 in February of 1992. She falls under the same height and age range as Doe, and she has her ears pierced, but Laura has the initials RP carved or tattooed into her left arm, and a cross tattoo on her left hand. We don't know what parts of Doe's body were and weren't decomposed when she was found, so I'm going to include those with tattoos. 20-year-old Amy Lovely went missing November 30th, 1992 from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She had traveled to Florida with a male friend and was staying at Covenant House under an assumed name. After leaving, she was not seen again. Her companion is in prison in Massachusetts, and I don't know if that's connected to Amy or not. She and Doe fall in the same height, weight, and age range, but Amy did have a tattoo on her left wrist of a cross and a tattoo of hearts on her ankle. And finally, we have 16-year-old Michelle Richardson, who was last seen in Palestine, Texas on May 1st, 1989, around 5.30 p.m. after leaving to go for a short walk and never returning. She left all of her belongings behind and her son, so police suspect this wasn't a runaway situation, but foul play. She had a U-shaped scar on her left arm and sometimes wore glasses, but she and Jane Doe have a similar height, weight, and age range, and her hair is also described as red blonde. Still, based on isotope tests, I think we have to consider that Jane Doe might not have been reported missing by family or friends, or isn't widely listed on well-known databases, and that this is a possible contributing factor as to why her identity still remains unknown. In September of 2018, cold case detective Jason Kerbo met with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and the FBI to discuss Doe's case and see what other investigative routes that they could use to identify her. One method Douglas County has expressed interest in using is an MVAC, an upholstery cleaner to extract the smallest particles of possible evidence from clothing fibers. Authorities hoped to use it to extract previously unseen DNA or particles on Doe's shirt that might lead them to her killer. And while Doe hasn't had any remarkable updates, Deputy Douglas County Coroner Chuck Brining emphasized Doe's case as still important to, quote, provide her family, her mother, her father, information on perhaps what happened to their loved one and reunite her with her family. The deceased no longer have a voice, and we are that voice. We speak for them.
Rainbow Falls Doe was a white female standing anywhere from 5 foot 3 inches to 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighing approximately 140 pounds. Her hair was shoulder length and light brown or reddish brown with blonde highlights. She wore approximately size 6 to 7 shoes and had a stocky build with pierced ears. She had a horizontal splenectomy scar on her upper left abdomen and her teeth were in perfect condition. She was found with several pieces of jewelry and wearing a Harley Davidson t-shirt. If you have any information on the circumstances surrounding Jane Doe's death or her identity, please contact the Douglas County Sheriff's Office at 303-660-7588 or at 303-660-7500. Special thanks to the Patreon family who voted on the Rainbow Falls Doe's case. This was the second case that they actually voted on for their January-February poll cases, and I can't thank you guys enough for the support. And be sure to keep an eye on the Patreon page. Um, there will be kind of a big update, big update coming soon there. Um, thank you all again, and thank all of you for giving Jane Doe a moment of your time today, um, for taking the time to sit down and listen to her story. Anyone who happens to live near Castle Rock or in the area we've discussed today, please feel free to share this on your social media pages, as you really don't know if someone who knows something is just out there somewhere and hasn't come forward yet. So, um, I hope we see a similar trend in Jane Doe's this year following Lavender Doe's case where we have more names to put to faces and I hope one day Jane Doe will reclaim her true name. Thank you for watching the video, for helping me to spread the word about these cold cases, and for your continued support. Stay safe friends and have a good night.